Hey everyone, welcome to Rene 201. Since Rene is a coordinate-derived uh, sequencer, the primary basis of control over the sequence uh, is, the, is the two clocks. Um, each axis on Rene has its own dedicated clock input, so every time there's a clock pulse at the X clock in, uh, the X axis is going to advance by one location, and every time there's a clock at the uh, Y axis in, it's going to advance uh, the Y axis by one location. Um, so by controlling when the X and Y axis uh, receive clock signals, we thereby control how Rene steps through its uh, location grid. Uh, you'll remember from the 101 video that the snake patterns would change X and Y axis at very specific locations in order to generate uh, those specific patterns. And that occurred because the Y axis would advance based on some number of clocks from the X axis. Uh, and while those coordinate sets were programmed into Rene uh, just in snake mode, we can make our own often more complex patterns by uh, having direct control over those two clocks. Uh, let's take a look at a couple of examples. So here's a very simple example. We're using the Cycling Maths uh, channel 1 end of rise output as the clock source. And that's being fed into the 4 milliseconds rotating clock divider. Uh, we're taking the divide by 1 output for the x clock and the divide by 4 output for the y clock. This means that the x-axis is going to advance four locations, and then at the fourth location, the y-axis is going to advance one location. So as you can see, we've recreated one of the programmed coordinate sets from snake mode. Obviously, swapping the x and y clock reverses things. Um, if we wanted the y-axis to advance four locations before the x-axis advanced one, we just switch the clocks around. So while any clock divider will work for this example, clock dividers with CV control, like the rotating clock divider, uh, are really cool because they add a lot of flexibility um, because you can change what divisions are used for each clock on the fly uh, through control voltage. So for example, I've hooked the pressure points here uh, up to the rotate input on the rotating clock divider, and as I touch a pad, uh, I can have the clock divisions change dynamically. Pretty cool. So uh, you can also use something like the uh, IntelliJ MicroStep, for example, as a pair of uh, clock sources, and calling up different preset patterns is going to have a pretty similar effect. Um, cool thing with the MicroStep is that uh, you can program in some kind of irregular divisions by uh, different step sequences. Um, so if you have a MicroStep, that's another cool way of, of doing something similar. Even if you don't have a rotating clock divider or a micro step, um, which to control the clock source before it reaches Renee's X and Y clock inputs, Renee also has features that allow you to modify the clock of each axis via the X and Y mod inputs and external gate source. So let's take a look at that. My personal favorite and highly interactive example of using Renee's uh, X and Y mod inputs is using a pressure points to have direct control over when each axis advances. And we can do this, um, the simple example here is I've molted um, the one clock source, uh, that same maths uh, end of rise output, to both the X and Y inputs. Um, and key is on the uh, X function page, enabling um, clock and mod and doing the same on the Y function page. And what that means, uh, with, when those are enabled, Rene will not advance based on the incoming clock unless both the incoming clock and the X or Y mod input is also high. So it's working like an AND gate for the incoming clock signal on each axis. Um, then what we do is use a pair of pressure points rows um, to uh, control the X and Y mod input signals. Um, if we have both down, both low, uh, neither axis is going to advance. Um, the x-axis high means, uh, or x mod high is going to be the x-axis is going to advance, but the y-axis won't. The reverse, the x-axis won't access, but the y will. And then finally, we have uh, both axes uh, advancing. And so you could, you could do that with just a single pressure points. So here we have just the x-axis advancing, just the y-axis, both. And as soon as we can start to, you know, playing the pads a little bit,
This is one of my favorite ways to play with Renee, actually, is just using the pressure points uh, to alter or process uh, the clocks coming in and having more direct control over how Renee steps through the uh, location map. Now you could take this a little bit of a step further if you have uh, brains and sequence the pressure points, thereby sequencing the Renee sequencer. If using both of Renee's gate outputs uh, in your patch isn't required, lots of fun can be had by having Renee advance one of its own axes, uh, our own sort of programmable live snake mode. Uh, and we do this by uh, patching uh, some clock source into your X clock input, and then take the Y gate output and patch it into the Y clock input. Now you're probably asking, how can we generate gates out of the Y gate output if the Y gate output is being used for our clock input? Well, by using the opposing uh, clock modes uh, in Renee, that's how we do it. So we want to enter the Y function page here, and we want to enable the OR, opposing uh, OR clock. And what that means is the um, Y axis uh, gate output is going to be determined by the X axis clock input. Um, but to make sure that we have control over uh, when that gate happens, we want to turn all the uh, Y gate page uh, stages off. So as we enable our clock, see it's just traveling along the x-axis. And any place we enable the y stage, it's going to jump uh, along the advance, sorry, along uh, the y-axis. So this is a fun way uh, to sort of play um, the, the location grid and trap uh, the sequence along a particular axis. And obviously we could reverse this. If we wanted to do this along the x-axis and not the y-axis, we simply reverse everything. We put the clock into the y-axis um, and the x gate output into the x clock, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, a fun thing we can do with this is incorporate our last example of using the pressure points uh, at the Y mod input to control whether or not we want the uh, gate output um, to generate a gate, even if it reaches a stage we have active. Um, and we do that with the uh, gate and mod. Sorry, the clock and mod. <laughs> so as you can see, we've, we've trapped it here because we're not touching the pressure points yet. But as soon as I touch the pad, it's allowing it to advance. So there you go. That's a little uh, introduction there to controlling clocks with Renee. Um, hopefully that uh, starts unlocking more Renee secrets and allows you to uh, perform with it even better. Uh, stay tuned for Renee 301 coming hopefully next week after the holiday where we'll look even more into different performance techniques using what we've learned in uh, Renee 101 and 201. Thanks for tuning in.